my fellow comic book collectors, this is Alan, the Comic Collector Geek, and this is part five of this crazy unboxing. Um, and we're going to go through all the stuff that's in these books. I know that I saw some books that are in this already that are huge. <laughs> these are some amazing books. You will not see these books anywhere else because they're just that rare. And they are major. They're major keys um, that are in this uh, this part of this unboxing. I've shown some pretty big books going through every episode. I try to make sure that there's at least a few cool books in each episode. Um, this one is going to have some exceptional books. <laughs> I, I don't know how to describe it any better than that. So um, let's get into the first one. So we got to get through all this painter's tape. But um, yeah, this is uh, going to be a pretty cool one. I, I, I accidentally saw some of the books in this. I, I usually try to avoid looking at the books beforehand because I want to, you know, I want to capture my true excitement and, um, so, you know, ex you know, just thrill of unboxing. Um, <laughs> oh, this one is, this one starts out with a really interesting one. It's, okay, I'm going to show this. Got to get all this painter tape off. Um, but this one's a really good one. Uh, this is, these are reprints. Um, this is Invasion of the Dumb Blondes. And this is ACG, which uh, was a golden age company. Um, but this is a modern reprint. And it's just, uh, you know, it was a silly series that they created um, back in the day. Um, so this is, uh, you know, Invasion of the Dumb Blondes. I think this is probably, I don't believe it was called that originally. I think it was uh, Ditsy Dames and there was a few other titles that they, they created. And I think this just like collects those ones. So there's that. And as I was saying, Ditsy Dames is another one from ACG. I, uh, this was a series that I really like. And this was actually my favorite cover from the Ditsy Dames series. The Ditsy Dames series ran six issues. I have issue number one. I just don't have the other issues. Um, this is the one I like the cover of the most, so I thought it was the funniest. Uh, you got the girl, the farmer, the farmer's daughter, maybe, <laughs> and she's about to milk, but what is she milking? She's milking the <laughs> the chickens instead of the instead of the cows, which is really really funny. So um, yeah, no, no, uh, uh, Veronica, uh, the cows are the ones with the horns. So yeah, just uh, yeah, just a really fun book. This, these are reprints, modern reprints. I tried to win this one a few times at auction. I always seem to lose. It goes for big money. Uh, this is a really, if you see the original for this, uh, it's it's quite expensive. And one that I never seem to win. So I figured, hey, um, why not buy uh, the next best thing, which is the modern reprint of it. Okay. Um, I'm going to actually leave this one. I'm not going to show this one book because I want to look it up before I show it. So I'm not going to show that one. Okay, so there was actually a really interesting thing that I bought. And I think this might all be part of it. But um, sometimes on eBay, you see some really cool books that I'm like, oh, I missed I must have missed out on that book. Um, because there are like cool covers that uh, uh, from titles that I know but I just don't remember seeing these covers. And um, that was the case with these ones where I was looking for a certain cover artist and I saw that there was these listings of these covers that I had not seen from titles that I normally purchase. Um, but what it was, it was a um, pre-sale and I didn't, I should have noticed it. Yeah, they weren't actually hiding the fact that it was a pre-sale, but I just, I don't know what I was thinking. I just bought it without realizing that it was a pre-sale. So I probably could have picked these up at my comic shop, my local comic shop for, you know, cover anyways. But uh, the pre-sale actually had better pricing, strangely. Um, but what I didn't realize is I wouldn't see these books for like two, three months. <laughs> and that's what it was. I was like, oh my goodness, are they ever going to send it? Am I ever going to get this order? And these are just pre-sale comics. This is Cinderella from Xenoscope, Cinderella versus the Tooth Fairy. And I, just, uh, I just thought it was a really cute cover. This is the kind of modern books that I buy. These uh, sort of sexy girl covers. 
Speaking of sexy girl covers, this is The Bomb. And I think it's a, you know, cute one with uh, uh, these zombies. I forgot who the artist is. I actually know who the artist is. I, I bought other stuff from them. Um, does it say? Ah, I, I, I know the name. I just can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, so this is Fearless Dawn, uh, Dawn, The Bomb, number one. And then we got another Cinderella. This is a, just an, I thought these were really great covers. And um, one of my um, subscribers actually mentioned these uh, this artist to me, and I, I that's how I actually ended up getting these ones because uh, I I checked out what you know covers they had done. So this is Bell, the Scream of the Banshee. I thought this was a really great cover. I forgot who the artist is. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, but I just thought it was a really great cover, really well, really well rendered uh, cover. Okay, so that's <laughs> those were the pre-orders that I got. I thought they were pretty cool. Okay, and this next one, I'm not sure what it is. over there okay <laughs> this one actually um somebody was showing this on uh a cover challenge i think it was uh epoch that was showing this one and i didn't realize that i actually had it already i thought i had it and i was like i couldn't find it and i was like oh i i, I might as well order it order it just to make sure i have it because i really like the cover this is the blood queen Number three or five? Number five. Um, I think this is the the B variant, um, and I so I ordered a book that I already had. I already had this book, um, so a bit annoying that I had to buy it again. But uh, I ended up finding it later. But uh, the Blood Queen. I just thought it was a great cover. Uh, it's based on the story of Elizabeth Bathory, who was probably the most um, prolific serial killer of all time of any person i think she is known for killing about 700 people and in very brutal ways she would torture her victims and she would target uh, not just poor people uh, but she would target these ris rich aristocrats and that's what was really the end of ended ended up being her down downfall because you know targeting peasants is okay but targeting rich aristocrats, not such a good idea. People don't like that too much. <laughs> so uh, back in the day, this, we're talking about like um, like three, 400 years ago. But uh, yeah, so Elizabeth Bathory, that was their um, Dynamite's uh, version of it. Okay, this is uh, another pulp. I picked up a bunch of pulps. If you watch the other unboxings or the other parts of this unboxing, uh, I showed some pulps. Well, this is some more pulps that I picked up really cheaply. Um, this is Startling Stories, I forgot what issue number this is, from 1952, March of 1952, and with pulps, that's the numbering usually, that it's like, the date is the, the numbering system, and this one's just a really interesting one, you can see this girl, she has like, a, a mask of a face in her hands, and this this weird creature guy here, and it says, Well of Worlds... Things of destruction. But yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> how that relates, but just a really interesting uh, good girl art cover. I thought it was cool. And um, I, I, with all these pulps that I bought, um, really, I bought them for starting bid. I, I put low bids on and um, just happened to win. So I was quite happy with getting those. Okay, um, next one. There's, uh, there's going to be some really big books I'm going to show at the very end of this video, so stay tuned. Uh, this next one, I have no idea what this is. Interesting wrapping. I have a feeling this is going to be raw, <laughs> where there's no bag and board. I don't like when people do that. I don't like when they send me comics 
and it's not bagged and boarded. I have a feeling that this is the case of this one. Okay. Yeah. Totally not bagged and totally not boarded. Oh my goodness. And it's a major book. Why do they do that? This one actually was a... I went through a lot of grief getting this book. And it's, amazingly, it didn't get too... It didn't get damaged in the process of the fact that they didn't bag and board it. But this is actually a major key. Um, this is Little Abner number 63. And one of the people on Instagram helped me find this. I think it was... Is it Lyle? Um, that helped me find this. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, basically it was um, on um, Abe Books was the place that sold this. Um, and um, yeah, I went through a whole thing to try to get this book. Um, but this is what it is. And the reason I went through all the hassle to try to get this book was uh, this is the very first appearance of Wolfgal. Now, this is Wolfgal right here when, when she's all dressed up. This is what she normally looks like up here. And Wolfgal is a very interesting character that my friend uh, Joe from Black Box Silver and Bronze uh, put me on. Um, where he basically, basically explained the story of her. Where she is basically this seductress. And she lures men back to her uh, cave. And she eats them. <laughs> she, you know. Uh, she's a werewolf girl, basically, or a wolf gal. Um, so this is Little Abner number 63, and this one is in really great shape. Um, I would say, like, maybe, um, seven on the scale. You know, it's a really, really, really sharp copy, maybe even higher. Um, very nice copy, number 63. First appearance of wolf gal. I just have to get it uh, bagged and boarded, <laughs> which I will do after filming this. Put it right there so it's safe. So that's a pretty major book. Um, and I got it for a great price too, considering it is high grade and it is kind of a major appearance. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, so, uh, another book that, um, my friend Joe was showing, uh, was Tippy Teen. And, uh, actually he showed this book, uh, during, uh, my cover challenge for, um, Easter covers. Easter covers, egg covers, bunny covers, um, and that's what this one is. This is Tippy Teen number 19, I believe. Yep, number 19. And it's, uh, just a really great bunny cover. <laughs> You know, this Tippy Teen is kind of a cute girl. This is, yeah, sort of a nice little egg, egg cover and bunny cover. And it has bonus pinups, I guess. Um, yeah, so just fun. Some Easter, Easter comics. You'll probably see this in a future Easter related uh, cover, cover challenge. So stay tuned for that. Just have to wait a year <laughs> for the next Easter. But um, yeah. Just a fun Easter cover. Okay, um, next one is another Golden Age book. That was Silver Age, but this is Golden Age. And this is Fire Hair um, number nine. And um, this was one of the last issues that I needed to complete the run of Fire Hair. Uh, actually, this is the last issue I needed. Um, Fire Hair was a pretty interesting series created by Fiction House. Um, just a character that I really liked from the Golden Age. Um, uh, originally, she appeared in Ranger comics, and she kind of took over that title. I guess she was like the popular character. So in the later issues of Ranger comics, it was basically all fire hair stuff. And um, uh, she got her own title, which is fire hair, uh, which ran for about, I think it was ran for about 11 issues. Um, and just a really great one. These would feature Maurice Whitman covers. This is uh, Maurice Whitman that did this cover. Just a really great um, good girl art cover with a you know, bit of that fire hair girl. Okay, uh, these ones over here. Save those for the end. You'll see some really big books at the end here. Um, another pulp. I didn't realize I bought so many pulps. Basically what happened was I 
put a whole bunch of opening bids for pulps and I, I, I won a bunch of them. I didn't realize how many I had won them. Okay. Okay, so this is, oh, okay. This one actually wasn't a opening bid one. It was just a best offer. They, you know, I think I paid like five, ten dollars for this. Um, this is Startling Stories again. Uh, the previous one was Startling Stories as well. This is from fall of 1940 something. <laughs> I can't tell. Um, this is just a really nice, uh, I like these metal bra covers. Uh, so this, I thought this was quite sexy. Um, and it's like maybe a post-apocalyptic one. It's like, it says Aftermath, the amazing complete novel by John Russell Fern, Superman of Dr. Jokes, you know, Jukes, I should say. Um, so yeah, just a, I thought it was a really great cover. Again, with pulps, it's all about the cover at the end of the day. Um, if you like the cover, yeah, <laughs> then maybe it's a good uh, potential investment. Um, okay. What's this next one? Let me see if I can get this out. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, I was talking about Good Girl art well one of the one of the titles that has some really great good girl art in it is millie the model and this is millie the model number 144 and um this is actually the first cover appearance of this character right here she appeared in a slightly earlier issue for the first time and I believe she was one of the first black characters. Uh, I, I gotta remember her name though. Uh, I try to remember her name. But um, but she's one of the first black characters that was ongoing um, character in um, in Marvel comics. So just sort of um, before Storm, <laughs> before all those major characters, it was this girl. So um, yeah, just kind of an interesting character and that's her first cover appearance. I gotta remember her name. Uh, this book uh, was... the cover is done by Stan Gee. I'm not sure who that is. But uh, yeah, this is an interesting one. Okay, next one. I gotta... I wish I remembered her name. I'm just trying to remember her name. Uh, I know it too. That's the annoying thing. Okay. Oh, this one is a fun one too. Oh, okay. Another really great one. This is a, another Golden Age book. Or, yeah, I think it's Golden Age. It should be. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the Lucy. Oh, this is I Love Lucy. Um, this is uh, Dell Four Color number 553. And this is the very first uh, appearance of Lucy. Lucille Bald in comics. Um, I like collecting these um, kind of iconic uh, celebrity comics. Um, and I think Lucy is probably, like I Love Lucy, is probably the most iconic um, of these like 50s uh, t television series. Um, I grew up watching it. Um, not I wasn't alive at that time, but I mean watching the reruns of it. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, there's even university courses taught about <laughs> I Love Lucy. So just a very iconic character uh, and personality. And this is her first comic book appearance. So I Love Lucy. Um, so if you ever want to find it, it's Del Four Color uh, 550 or 535. 535. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Yeah. I love Lucy. Oh, and this one looks like I won of another <laughs> one of my friends. I told you my friend Falco, he sends me some stuff. And this is a really great collection of uh, a win that he got. Um, basically, Falco is my friend from Germany who enters in a whole bunch of contests and he wins some pretty cool stuff. Well, this is some pretty cool stuff. 
First, we got a really cool Pokemon card. I believe it's just it's encapsulated, but it doesn't say. It's signed by somebody, probably the artist. I think that's pretty cool. Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I think it's really cool when it's like in this little capsule thing. It's really awesome. Okay, so there's that. And we got some more Dragon Ball Z, a little, little poster. It's fun. Usually these end up, I give these to my son a lot of the time, but I might keep these ones. Like, I kind of like it. <laughs> I think they're really cool. Um, also, I got this like little Lego set. Looks like a, a Dragon Ball Z Lego set with the character. So that's fun. And... Then we have this really cool Dragon Ball Z slab. I mean, this is like, wow, I got a free slab. Um, so this is uh, Dragon Ball Z Volume 4, number 3 from 2001. And this is Viz Comics. Really cool. I like, I like getting a free slab. That's pretty awesome. I'll show the back as well. Um, and Akira Toriyama, Story and Art really cool book wow that is really nice i really like that okay now i promised that there would be some really big books in this there was actually some pretty big books that i showed but i gotta show bigger books i gotta i gotta end this video with a bang and i wanted to show some pretty major books so we got uh, actually major <laughs> these are major books. these are grail books um the first one is miss america number three and this is the second appearance of Patsy Walker in comics. You can see this is just a kind of a great uh, like painted cover. Almost like a photo cover. Yeah, very interesting one. And just a, you know, cool second appearance. So Miss America number three is the second appearance of Patsy Walker. Well, Patsy Walker, you know, she was a very popular character in the, the Golden Age. And Marvel took her right into the Modern Age by making her the character Hellcat. And uh, originally she was just like a teen, like, and then she became sort of a fashionista. Um, and she had her own series, like Patsy Walker, that ran quite long. And then they made her into Hellcat, I, which is such a weird, <laughs> weird transition. Um, but then, you know, recently they, in the modern era, they, they have Hellcat is having its own series. So, um, this is her second appearance. Well, let's, let's do better than that. Let's have her first appearance. Well, this is Patsy Walker's first appearance. This is Miss America number two. Um, and this is actually a photo cover. Uh, this woman right here is, uh, her name is, uh, Dolores uh, Con uh, Colon, um, and she basically was 15 at the time when she did this photo, <laughs> and um, you know, she wasn't a model or anything, but she she did model Miss America. This is actually Miss America is this cover. This is not Patsy Walker, but this is the book that Patsy Walker made her first appearance in. And it's just a really rare book. I mean, this is, I think there's less than 10 of these on the census. It is a major key for uh, Patsy Walker, um, being her first appearance and all. Um, and it's just such a hard book to find. Um, and this one actually is in reasonable shape. It has some water damage at the top here. You can see that. But um, for the most part, it presents really, really well. It's a really strong copy. Um, and this one, I basically won it through auction. Um, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to win it, <laughs> like, uh, because it was uh, one of those really competitive ones that there, there's a lot of people bidding on it. But I did manage to win. I put in a crazy bid at the end to get it. Um, it was not, not a cheap book. <laughs> definitely not. Um, but uh, definitely one that I really wanted. Um, just a really great book. And... Just a really, uh, I think it's a really great cover, to tell you the truth. Um, so Miss America herself, the character, didn't really do that much beyond the Golden Age. 
um but um you know this miss america series actually ran quite long um but it was patsy walker that really became the the star of the of the the book and she got her own title later on so i just thought this was kind of fun nice cosplay cover and um actually the woman that um did it became like a librarian or something like that afterwards so just very very interesting uh you know story that you know some random girl does a cosplay cover for a comic and uh, yeah that's what she's known for um <laughs> you know years later um so yeah so that's um miss america number two first appearance of patsy walker and that was one of the biggest books in this unboxing actually that's a pretty big book um definitely one that you don't see that often um i hope you enjoyed this unboxing and um stay tuned there's some even bigger books coming up in the later videos um and um yeah if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel please like this video and um tell your friends and family and everyone you know to subscribe to this channel because i need i need to get to 10,000 views uh 10,000 subscribers the goal is I, and this is just an aside story. I, um, my my kids said, you're not cool, Dad. <laughs> because uh, even though I have this YouTube channel, I'm not cool unless, unless I have 10,000 subscribers. So um, my goal is to get to 10,000 subscribers just to be cool in my kids' eyes. And so if you can help me out with that goal, I'd really appreciate it. And um, yeah, that's my goal. I want to get to 10,000 subscribers so I can be cool in my kids' eyes. <laughs> that's, that's all we ask as parents, just to be cool in our own kids' eyes. Um, once they hit teenagers, it, it's really hard to maintain that coolness effect. Um, so yeah, so that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.